we're gonna start off with a regular discharge cleaning, um, not isolation. So, so the first thing you're gonna do when you come in the room, the room will be stripped. Everything will be stripped out of the room. The bed will be stripped. Um, in a regular discharge room, we're gonna use the hydrogen peroxide wipes over here. So one important thing you're gonna to wanna to know is the kill times, which you can find in the book right here. Um, a kill time is how long the chemical has to stay on the surface to kill whatever you're trying to get rid of. Um, it has to stay wet. You can't come in and just wipe it and then wipe it off with a paper towel because that's just gonna defeat the purpose of everything. So Joe's gonna start wiping. The bed is one of the most important things to make sure you're getting cleaned off. These beds you have to tear apart in order to clean them properly. Break not set. Break not set. You're going to make sure the these come off because when you make the bed, it's a whole different way to make the bed. You're going to lift the bed all the way up. Make sure everything's up because you're going to wash everything. You're going to wash the tops, the bottoms. Every high touch surface is the most important thing to do when you're cleaning a discharge room. So you're going to just use the hydrogen peroxide wipes and just start washing everything down. Make sure you get all the other high touch surfaces including the tray tables the chairs the anything you can wash you're gonna wash the TVs do not use hydrogen wipes or spray of any sort on there you can use Windex or we have wipes for them these two knobs have to be inserted into these so it doesn't slide off the bed I don't make that put gloves on. No. Um, we could always make the bed after we do the isolation one That's so right. that it can dry because it has to stay wet for ten or for a minute in order for it to kill anything. Um, you can also look in your little binder here for all the kill times. Um, and, then, and then you're going to mop the floor. After the bed's made. After You're going to come in the room with your proper PPE on during an isolation room, whatever the isolation might be. You bring everything into the room with you, and you cannot leave the room until everything is clean, sanitized, everything. You can't go back and forth out of the room. It has to all be in there with you. So make sure you have your cleaning supplies, your mops, your rags, everything you're going to need. So. For an isolation, we use the C diff spray, and with that, we have to use regular rags. Uh, you come in and you shut the door, and you don't come out till you're done. Great. 
then I usually leave my stuff here. And nothing can leave the room until it's been washed off. You cannot take out IV poles or linen carts, anything until it's completely washed off. It all stays in here until you're done. Okay, so I'm just gonna do the small section here. So with an isolation clean like this, you clean everything the same way. High touch surfaces, everything is clean. But the differences are is we wash the walls. wet so it can sit there for the with C dip it has to sit for three minutes in order for it to kill COVID and anything like that. Now the hydrogen peroxide wipes kill everything but it does not kill um, C diff so that's why we have the C diff spray and that's why we use that in all isolation rooms because that kills everything. Now, if there's a chance that they have a half a COVID room that they have to clean for a patient to come upstairs, you would clean it like a regular clean room because patients can't be around that because it's really strong. And the curtain won't come down because you have to wash it and all that. So we take our hydrogen peroxide, we have spray. Mm -hmm. Do you have any in the back? I got And we'll spray the curtains down for a half a COVID clean if they need it. This would be if they left them open until the whole room can be completely terminally clean, but that's you know best case scenario. But the hydrogen peroxide spray you put on soft surfaces, curtains, soft chairs, mattresses, anything like that, anything soft surface. Um, other than that, you clean them the same way. Now, when you bring the bedding in for a half a COVID clean, I would have somebody standing outside the door or have it sitting on there because you cannot leave an isolation room until you're done cleaning. So they can hand it into you so you can make the bed and then be able to take your PPE, proper PPE off and you know leave the room. So once this room is done, because you're going to wash it the same way as you do any room, just use your C. diff spray with a wet rag. Mm -hmm. Don't use the hydrogen wipes with the C. diff spray. You're going to clean the bathroom last. You're going to wipe everything down, toilet bowl, throw everything away. Everything gets thrown away. You don't keep anything in the rooms. The tape, Kleenexes, all that stuff has to be thrown out. Anything anybody could have touched. Um, so when that is all done, the floor is all mopped, you can come in and make the bed. So once the curtain is down, we have a washer downstairs. They can take it downstairs to wash it, um, bring up another curtain and replace it. and then the floor would be mopped and then the room would be ready to go once the curtain is put back up and that is an isolation discharge room um, what's important is to make sure you know kill times how long to leave them on surfaces what to use is very important um, that's all in this book so when you leave you take off all your PPE the way you're supposed to take it off, but everything you bring into the room with you, mops, buckets, anything has to be washed off before it leaves this room. 
You cannot set it in the hallway and wash it later. You have to wash it and then set it in the hallway. And that's why I have the black bags because I'll put all my dirty rags and my mops in that black bag so it goes out clean.